Good evening. I'm Mark Syme, minister of the Northfield Church of Christ, and I'd like to welcome all of you to the PM services of our church for Sunday, March the 20th. And happy spring, first day of spring to all of you. Uh, per usual, we'll sing a few songs. We will observe the Lord's Supper, and I'll have a message for you. And then a closing prayer. And so, if you have the songbook that we use, Songs of Faith and Praise, uh, or if you do not have the song, if you do have your device, I will give you the name of the song. You can Google it real quickly if you want to sing along with us. And so the first song is entitled, Lord of All Being Throned Afar. It is number 183 in our book, Lord of All Being Throned Afar. 183. <clears throat> Lord of all being throned afar, thy glory frames from sun and star, center and soul of every sphere, yet to each loving heart. Son of our life, thy quickening ray Sheds on our path the glow of day Star of our hope, thy softened light Cheers the long watches on the night. Our midnight is thy smile withdrawn. Our noontide is thy gracious dawn. Our rainbow arch thy mercy sign. All save the clouds of sin are thine. Thank you for singing with us. If you would turn to number 770. It is called Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. 770. The title is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind of mankind. <clears throat> Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclose us in our right full mind when purer lives thy service find in deeper reverence praise in simple trust like theirs who heard beside the Syrian sea, the gracious calling of the Lord, let us like them without a word rise up and follow. By Galilee, all come of hills above, where Jesus now to share with me the silence of eternity. Interpreted my love. 
Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. The song before the Lord's Supper is in memory of thy Savior's love. It is number 335. Three thirty-five. <clears throat> In memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast where every humble. Contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life, with which our souls are fed. The in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his banner thus we sing the wonders of his love. Anticipate by faith the heavenly feast of When we do gather together on the first day of the week, we are instructed to partake of the Lord's Supper. And uh, the song aptly puts it, we do this in memory of the Savior's love. Uh, we keep the sacred feast and we're to have humble and contrite hearts. Uh, with that, we take the bread, which is the bread of life. And uh, the song says that our souls are fed by that bread of life. The cup that is in token of his blood that uh, he shed for the sinners of the world. So we sing this song and we observe this feast uh, under the banner of uh, the Savior's love for each one of us in God's divine plan to uh, send Jesus to the earth in human form that he would be the master teacher but in ultimate he would give the final and ultimate sacrifice for once and for all, he sacrificed himself that we might live. So as we gather about the table, help us to remember that sacrifice. Help us to uh, understand its significance and help us to understand its relevance in our life and why uh, biblically we are told to observe this feast uh, every Lord's Day. With that, Let's uh, give thanks for the bread. We understand, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, through uh, your Son, uh, the body that he gave up for us uh, is that with which our souls are fed. I know we think of uh, the body maybe in a different way, but in reality, this is the spiritual part of 
of our sacrifice to you, that as you have told us to take up our cross to follow you, that we are to do that in remembrance of the body that your son gave up. Be with us as we partake. We ask this prayer in his most holy name. Amen. We understand that the cup is in token of his blood. And we understand that uh, blood is that life-giving substance within the human body that sends things to the body and keeps the body alive. And in that, uh, we also understand that uh, Jesus shed his blood. And there was a symbolism in that. Not only did the life ooze out of him when that blood uh, left his body, but the blood would be uh, forever. This symbol, this symbol of uh, what will wash away our sins. As the song uh, tells us, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's pray. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we partake of of uh, the fruit of the vine. We understand, dear Heavenly Father, that it symbolizes the blood that Jesus shed for each of us. Help us to understand how powerful that gift was and that sacrifice of his blood was and the forgiveness and the atonement that we have through it and the forgiveness of sins that we have by it. Help us to partake in a manner that you would find worthy of that sacrifice. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper having been completed, we come to the part of our service where we give back to the Lord that which we have been prospered. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Uh, the Lord wants us to give back. Uh, he talked about the Macedonians in 2 Corinthians. Uh, he talked about how wonderful they were in giving not from their plenty, but in giving uh, from their need because they understood that uh, this uh, money uh, offering was necessary. Help us to understand that uh, our church is only able to do its job through the monies that are provided. Uh, bless us in our giving, your heavenly Father. Let's pray together. We're so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, for this time that we have that we can give back uh, a portion of what you gave to us. Uh, we understand that uh, every good and perfect gift comes from on high, that uh, we come into this world with nothing and we will leave this world with nothing, but we are instructed to be good stewards of what ha has been entrusted to us. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to give with an open mind and an open heart that the work of the church might be accomplished. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. <clears throat> and the last song uh, before the lesson is called, He Gave Me a Song. It is a, a duet. And uh, we will sing it as a bass uh, melody duet. And so I hope we do this song justice. It's called, He Gave Me a Song, number 608, 608. <clears throat> he took my burdens all away up to a brighter day. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song. A wonderful song. A wonderful song I now can sing. In my heart joy bells ring. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song. 
A wonderful song he gave me a song, he gave me a song to, sing to sing about. He lifted me, he lifted me from, sin and doubt. from sin and doubt. Oh, praise his name. Oh, praise his name. He is my king. He is my king. A wonderful song. A wonderful song he, he is, is to me. me. He is to me. Brighter than there's every day, walking the heavenly way. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song. A wonderful song. A wonderful song I now can sing. Praises to him, my king. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song. He gave me a song to sing about. He lifted me, he lifted me from, from sin and doubt. From sin and doubt. Oh, praise his name. Oh, praise his name. He is my king. He is my king. A wonderful song. A wonderful song. He, he is, is to me. me. He is to me. I am redeemed no more to die, never to say goodbye. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song. A wonderful song. And some of these days in that fair land, sing with a chorus grand. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song, he gave me a song to sing about. He lifted me from sin and doubt. From sin and doubt, oh praise his name. Oh praise his name. He is my king. A wonderful song, he is to me. He is to me. Thank you for singing along with us. I know the Lord was praised. I hope all of us were uplifted by singing. I, I got pumped up. So uh, I hope all of us uh, really, really enjoyed uh, the singing service this evening. If you were there this morning, you heard that the title of tonight's lesson will be The Tree of Life. The Tree of Life. Now, uh, this lesson goes back to the garden. Uh, it goes back to uh, Genesis. And uh, if you remember uh, the song, uh, I'm sorry, the, the lesson this morning uh, was the question, am I my uh, brother's keeper? And um, so uh, the, the lesson from this morning uh, took place kind of after what took place with Adam and Eve when they uh, when they ate of the tree that they were not supposed to eat of. And with that in mind, as we go back to Genesis, we actually, we're going to go from the alpha to the omega. We're going to go from the beginning to the end. And we're going to skip from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. And in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7, Revelation 2, verse 7, here's what, here's what it says. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Do you see the, the symbolism here to the tree of life and to the tree that was in the garden? Let's, let's look at that scripture again, because maybe we've read it a few times. Maybe we've perused the book of Revelation, but we haven't really pinpointed this particular verse. We have that, that familiar uh, term, and I used it last week in my lesson, he who has an ear, let him hear. And in this case, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And here's what it says. To him who overcomes, I will 
give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You know, sometimes there is a sense, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, if you listen to this message and you think a little bit differently and we want to talk about it, that's fine. In a sense, the thing I think that we're looking for in this world is the thing that was lost in Eden. Adam and Eve lost their innocence in the Garden of Eden when they sinned, when they ate from that which we, from which they should not have eaten. They saw things in a very, very different light. They perceived that they were naked and they thought this can't be acceptable and they attempted to cover their bodies. And then, uh, and then in realizing that they had done something wrong, they tried to hide from God. And I find that intriguing. And, uh, and so, as we look at this, think of what was lost in Eden. I don't think it is lost on us. What God has in store for us beyond this world is described in terms that hearken back to the garden. And I think that the passage that we read from the book of Revelation takes us from the last book of the Bible back to the first, where it says, To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Um, how do you like your life? How, how do you like life? The essence is that it, it's really all we have, isn't it? Each of us has our own individual life with our own individual thoughts. We've each been blessed with individual talents. And um, God wants us to utilize those talents the, the best that we can possibly utilize them. And so, and so we cling to biological life, don't we? We cling to it. We cling to it because we view it here on earth as our most prized possession. It's our physical life. We do things to try to enhance it, many of us do by eating the right foods, by getting the right exercise, by getting the right amount of rest, by not working all the time, by sometimes easing our minds, by doing things like reading, by studying, by, you know, all of the things that we might do in, in this life. And we cling to this life. How often, and, and you know, when you get older, um, <laughs> one of the pages that you turn to is the obituaries. Now, jokingly, very often I say, I read in the obituaries. I said, well, I didn't read about myself. I wasn't in there. Well, obviously, if I'm talking, I wasn't in there. But very often, when we read the obituaries, let's say a person had a horrible disease like cancer. And very often, the obituary says that this person fought courageously for six months or for a year. When we get cancer, we, we do almost everything that we can. We radiate it. We, you know, we do chemotherapy. We do most everything we can because what we're trying to do is we're trying to cling to life. You know, 11 years ago, um, I had a, a, a heart problem.
procedure. It came very much as a surprise to me for those of you who know me uh, because I have exercised. Maybe I did not eat all the foods that I should have eaten. It probably precipitated what happened to me. But I had what was called a triple bypass surgery. We cling to life. We're, we're able to do those procedures now for people who get diseases to keep them from uh, from dying and to improve the, the physical quality of life. And you know what? What's going to happen to us is that our years are going to wind down. Now, if we live what I like to call a normal life, uh, what is a normal life? Uh, and we live and we finally succumb to old age. We perhaps live into our 80s or we even live into our 90s. Uh, we have we have run out the string, so to speak, haven't we? And so as the long years of mortality winds down, um, you know, I... I think there are some things that we have to give pause to. Now, we desire to live longer. But as we learn more about our real place in the world itself, God says that we were created in his image. That means that we are spiritually created in his image. And you know what? Jesus himself claimed to be the giver of life on that level. In John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. That's our, that's, I believe, is talking about our physical life. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned, they sinned by being deceived into uh, knowing that if they, if they ate that fruit, that they would know all that God knew. And they would do everything they could to know that, even disobey God because God said, don't eat of that tree. And so they were, they were exiled from the garden. There was another tree in that garden called the tree of life. And I have this right. Adam and Eve weren't supposed to die. They were supposed to become part of uh, the tree of life. Genesis 3, 22 to 24. And you know, as we look at their lives and as their years wound down, they must have surely regretted that decision that they made over and over and over again. And here we are. March the 20th, 2022. And we're their heirs. And we should be warned that our quest for knowledge, although we should know as much as we need to know about what the, the Lord's plan is for us, is a poor substitute for the life that we've lost. We can't pursue knowledge and lose our spiritual lives. The poet Lord Byron uh, put it this way. And you know what? Lord, <laughs> he wasn't a Lord. Uh, that was a name that was attached to him. But let me, let me quote what he said. And there is so much truth in what he said. He said, sorrow is knowledge. They who know the most must mourn the deepest over the final truth. 
the tree of knowledge is not the tree of life. That's deep. The tree of knowledge is not the tree of life. That notwithstanding, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can have all that the word life entails and all that it was ever made to convey. And to me, the amazing thing is the life that is available right now in Christ at its very best is only a foretaste of what we have to look forward to. You see, the, the Bible is filled with the way that we're supposed to live. Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23 a first, a second Peter chapter one, starting about verse six, there are lists of virtues that we must engender in our life. They're called the fruit of the spirit. Uh, they aren't given a name in the epistle of second Peter. And these are all supposed to be traits, virtues, characteristics that we are supposed to make uh, a part of our lives to make our lives as rich and as full as we can possibly make it. And you know what? The, the absolute truth is that all we have here on earth is kind of like an hors d'oeuvre as to what we have waiting for us, the fuller life the life that we're looking toward, that Paul said he was straining toward, to, to the life of the upward goal of the higher calling he talked about. And, and we ought to strain for it with every ounce of spiritual strength that we have so that when this physical life is over, we transition into that spiritual eternal life. And the, the confident and powerful hope there of this life releases us from the fear of letting go of this life. For the faithful, uh, the faithful Christian, physical death has actually become a door to a greater life, which is life indeed. Let's look at what the writer of Hebrews said about this in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. If this life is all that there is, it's bondage. It's something that has, has tied us up. I don't want to be tied up. I want to know that when my life, my physical life is over, that I have a greater life that's waiting for me. You know, there's, there's an old saying out there uh, about our vocation, that, that which we choose as our job. And, and it goes something like this. Someone who does for a living what he really likes never has to go to work. I felt that as a school teacher. I felt like this was my calling. And so I never felt like that this was work. Oh, believe me, I got tired. It was hard. But the hard is part of what made it great. But people who get forced into a job that they don't want live in bondage. Because they're doing something maybe just to feed their family, which is noble in itself. 
but they're not enjoying that part of life. And Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they have it more abundantly. If we live the Christian life that we're supposed to live, we will have an abundant life. We will have a life of love and peace and service, a life that God will be satisfied with so that when we transition, we transition to eternal life with him. William Penn, who was a Quaker, said this, he who lives to live forever never fears dying. Wow. He who lives to live forever eternally never fears dying. And so I hope that you enjoyed this lesson about the tree of life and, and you pause to think about some of the things that I said, and I hope that uh, they made sense uh, to you. The only way that we can truly eat of the tree of life is to submit to uh, God's plan of salvation through Jesus Christ. That submission comes by giving our lives over to God through the sacrifice that Jesus made for us in confessing the knowledge that Jesus is the Son of God and, and saying, I don't want to live the way I lived. I'm going to repent of that and then being baptized for the remission of our sins. If you need to start your walk and starting your walk toward life, the tree of life that is beyond this physical life, then the invitation is open to you. If you know the truth and you know that you need to, to confess and repent and be baptized, get in touch with one of us and we will be there and, and, and just as fast as we possibly can. I pray that uh, each of us will uh, be blessed by our service this evening. Let's pray together. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we attempt to do more in your kingdom. Help us to take this abundant life and, and make it all that we can make it to, to think of our brothers and think of our sisters, uh, to think of our families and understand that uh, through our love of you, that we love them also. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, so that uh, we can one day uh, eat of the real tree of life, the tree of eternal life. Be with us through this life, dear Heavenly Father. Help us and guide us and comfort us when we need comforting. Uh, continue to bless us. Continue to be with the world that seems to be in a turmoil. Be with those in the Ukraine that are suffering, dear Heavenly Father, and help us if we can to, to be of, of aid to them in whatever way that we can. Continue to be with us. Continue to bless us. And uh, we just pray, dear Heavenly Father, for your loving hand on each one of us. Be with us. We ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Be safe and may God bless you all.